Happy Friday, everyone. It's wonderful to see you today. I'm Miss Kendra here at Learn and Play Montessori School, and it is so beautiful today. It's a beautiful Friday, and I think it's going to be a beautiful weekend this weekend, too. So before we get started, if anyone is wondering where to find the worksheets, our worksheets can be found on our website on our remote learning portal and we can sign up and get registered for remote learning on the website learnandplaymontessorischool.com or learnandplaymontessori.com and we can sign up and find the worksheets there and then come with us we'll be all ready to go all right so let's take a look at the calendar yesterday was thursday today is Friday, tomorrow is Saturday, another great day. We're in the month of July, thank you. So it is Friday, July the 10th now and in 2020, fantastic. Let's go over and take a look at some language worksheets. Alrighty, it's a language time. Let's take out our first worksheet, write our name on it. Miss Kendra. Okie dokie, let's read the directions first. Say the name of each picture. If the vowel sound is short, Color the box with the word short. If the vowel sound is long, color the box with the word long. So let's pick a color. I'm feeling green today. Let's look at number one. What are we looking at here? This is a robe, a robe robe. So the O in robe is short or long? Robe. R-O. O. Is it A ah, short or O oh, long? Robe. Long. Okay, fantastic. That's exactly right. Long it is. Let's color in long and take a look at the next one. Number two is a mop mop is that long or short mop ah ah short that's right if it was mope then it would be long right but we'd have to put an e on the end of that word to make it long number three is a doll. Doll. The O in doll is long or short? Doll. Doll or doll? Yeah, it's short. It's doll. Interesting doll. With a cape. All right, let's look at number four. It is a boat, a boat. Long or short? Boat, long. Awesome, you guys are getting really fast. You were already fast? Well, that's wonderful. All this practice makes us super fast. If you're already fast, and we're gonna get it super fast. If you're already super fast, we're gonna get super, super fast, okay? All this practice is always wonderful. Let's do one more on this page. Number five is a cone. Is cone have a long or short vowel sound? Long, good job. Okay, let's jump over to the next page after we finish coloring long. In. Wonderful. Here, well, the directions say, say the name of each picture. Circle the words in the boxes that rhyme with the picture name. Do you guys like rhyming? Me too. Okay, let's do number one. 
We know that is a cone. All right, let's find the words that rhyme. Cone, what is this one? Bone, does that rhyme? Cone, bone. Yes, it does. Let's circle bone. Let's see the next one. Cone, cane. No, that does not rhyme. Cone, loan. Cone, loan. Do you want a cone or a loan? Do those rhyme? Yeah, they rhyme. And cone and moan. I feel like I'm reading Dr. Seuss. Cone and moan. Yeah, those rhyme too. Awesome. How about cone and can? No. How about cone and Joan? Yeah, that rhymes. It's a name. That's all right. It still rhymes. Cone and what is this word? Tone. Cone tone. Yeah, those rhyme. Cone and run? Cone and zone? Another one. Cone and coat? Nah. So let's read all the rhyming words here that rhyme with cone. Cone, bone, loan, moan, joan, tone, zone. Woo! That's a lot of rhyming words. All right, so let's do the same thing with all of these pictures and all of these words. All right, let's jump to the next language worksheet with our name up top. Number one is what? Miss Kendra, you didn't read the directions. Say the name of each picture. Print the name on the line. In the last box, draw a picture of a long O word. Print the word. Okay, so we're looking at long O words again. Are you ready to write these out? Yeah, we've got lots of practice. This is why our practice is so great. We can remember how to write these words. Number one is a picture of a Bone, and they wrote bone. Now we're looking at what here? Soap. That's right, some soap. Okay, how do we write soap? Right, S. And so what letters make the long O sound here? O, yeah, we know there's an O. And we need another vowel to make the O a long sound. In, in soap, it's not an E, it's, a, it's an A, right? Soap. And what's the last letter? P, that's right. Soap. And number three, what are we looking at here? A rope. Right? So how do we spell rope? How do we write rope? R, thank you. What's next? O, rope. Is there an A there? No, the P goes there and the vowel is next, E, right? Rope. Not rop, rope. All right, let's do one more and take a look at the next language worksheet. Number four, we're looking at a bow. A bow. How do we write bow? I hear the beginning sound is a B, and I know there's a long O, but what are we gonna do here to make that O a long sound? We're not gonna add an A, we're not adding an E, a W, that's right, I'm glad you remember. W, bow, bow, bow. Okay, let's take a look. We'll finish this later. I'm excited to see this one, okay?
Okay, Miss Kendra. Let's look at our next worksheet. The directions on this one say each picture name. Draw a line through the three pictures in a row that have the same long vowel sound. Are we ready to do this? Okay, let's first, we're gonna say each picture name. Let's do one box together, okay? Let's do the first one. I see ice, hay, hive, tube, fruit, glue, cake, slide, hose. This is a challenging one, okay? So we're gonna see, said the names of each picture. We're gonna draw a line through the three pictures in a row that have the same long vowel sound. Okay, <laughs> let's do it. We have ice and hay. Can we draw those together? Same long vowel sound? No. How about ice and tube? No. Cake and slide? Hmm. Cake and fruit? Are those the same vowel sounds? Hose and glue? No. What about glue and fruit? Glue, fruit. Glue, fruit. Okay, that's a good start. What about tube? Tube, glue, fruit. <laughs> we got it. Let's draw a line all the way through. Tube, fruit, and glue. The same long vowel sounds. All right. That's great. Let's do the next three at home. If you need help, we can ask for help. Or in your Zoom class, we can talk about it in your Zoom class too, okay? Uh, the next language worksheet up. Let's get our reader out. Let's take out our reader. Oy. Okay, the first option up top here is ant. An ant, just to let you know. Okay, our first picture here is, wow, oh, she's so cute. Who is that? Let's read. This is an ant. This is Miss Pat. Well, it must be Miss Pat. This little bird is Miss Pat. Let's circle Miss Pat. Miss Pat can sing. That looks right. Miss Pat can sting. Huh. She doesn't have a stinger, and she's definitely singing. Miss Pat can sing. Right, because we remember S sounds like S, and I-N-G is ing, ing, right? Good job. Okay, let's take a look at our next one here. Who is that? Is that Miss Pat? No. This ant can sting. So what letter are we missing here? Ant. Right, an A. Do you wanna meet this ant? Me neither. I'm gonna stay away from something with a stinger. Okay, let's take a look at one more on this page, and then we're gonna take a look at a letter we have ready. <clears throat> I am a dish. Hmm, no. I am a fish. 
right? When we see I S H together, what does that what does that sound like? Ish, ish, right? So dish, fish, wish, right? I am a fish. Let's circle fish. A fish has fins. What letter are we missing here? What letters? Fish. S. H. And when we see S and H together, what sound does that make? Shh. Right? Good job. Okay, let's finish the rest of your reader later at home. And we have something really fun this Friday. It is some letter writing. Right? I remember last week we wrote some letters to our garbage collectors. Did you share those with your garbage collector? You did? You didn't? That's okay. You did? I'm really happy for you. Were they happy? Yeah, I bet they really liked getting a letter. Would you want to get a letter? You do? Yeah, maybe someone will send you a letter. Let's take a time, take some time to send somebody else a letter. Who do you really want to send a letter to? Maybe I want to send a letter to my cousin or to my grandma or to my friend. Maybe I haven't seen my friend in so long. I want to see you, friend. I'm going to write you a letter. I'm going to tell you how much I miss you. Okay, so we have this paper here. We can put our name up top. And we can start with dear, D-E-A-R. And who are we writing this to? How about, I'm gonna write it to my mom. I'm gonna write mom, M-O-M, -M, dear mom. And I don't know, what do I wanna say to my mom? She is so wonderful to me. I'm going to say, I love you, mom. And I want to say, thank you, thank you oops, for giving me a mask. My mom gave me a mask and I was so happy. So I want to say thank you to her. She is so nice to me. And my dad is so nice too. Maybe I'm going to write him a letter. And after I'm all done writing another something, I'm going to write sincerely. What is sincerely? What is sincerely? I'm going to write sincerely. Miss Kendra. And when I write sincerely, that means that I really mean what I say. I am being truthful in what I say and I really mean it. And I hope you have a great day, right? Okay, so let's write a letter today or tomorrow or every day to someone you really want to say hi to, somebody you miss maybe, or somebody close to you. That sounds good too. Thanks for joining me with some language. Let's go take a look at some math. We've got some big numbers again today, right? Yeah, okay, let's sit down and take a look at these huge numbers. Okay, so we've got hundreds, tens, and ones. A lot going on. My name is still Miss Kendra. Okay, so let's look at our beads here so we can see what our numbers look like. <clears throat> we have our ones, the single bead, right? One. And then our tens, right? Tens. That's ten beads together, tens. And then, what comes after that? We have ones, 
tens, and now we're talking about hundreds. Hundreds. Here is one hundred beads all together, right? So ten ones makes our ten, and ten tens makes our hundred. Ten hundreds makes our what? Our thousand. Look at this. There's one thousand beads here in this cube, bead cube. All right, so today we're just looking at ones and tens and hundreds, okay? Let's take our worksheet out. All right, so here in our first one, it says, how many? Write the number. Okay, so let's look at our hundreds. Let's count how many hundreds we have. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we're gonna write that in our hundreds, eight. And then how about tens? One, two, three, three tens. And how many ones? That's right, just the one. So how do we write that number on the line? Eight, three, one. How much is that? What number is that? 831. Yeah. Good job. Okay, let's do the next one. How many hundreds are here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven hundreds. How many tens? Just one. And how many ones? Five ones. Okay, let's write that on the line. Seven, one, five. How do we say this number? 715. Awesome, let's save this one for later. Let's go to the next page. How many, write the number. So now we're just writing the number on the line. Are we ready to do this? Oh yeah. Okay, so it gives us the first one. 100, three tens, six ones, 136. The next one, let's do that one together. How many hundreds? Two, so that's the first number on the line, right? Two, and then tens, how many? Two, and how many ones? Nine. What is this number? 229, awesome, okay. Let's look at the next one. We've got lots of good practice here. And why do we wanna practice? It's gonna help it stick in our brain, right? We're making those connections. We're us using your brain cells, right? Oh yeah. Okay, let's write the number here. We'll do one on this side. How many hundreds? Four, okay, we're fast. This is great. And how many tens? Seven. And how many ones? Right, we see five. So what is this number? 475. Good job. Let's do one more on the next page. Oops, that's my blank page. So let's see here. The first one, how many hundreds? Or if we count by hundreds, how do we say it? 100, 200, 300, 400, 500. How many tens? 10, 20, 30, 40, four tens. How many ones? One, two, three, 
four, five, six, six. Five hundred and forty-six. Great job. Okay, let's see if we can do one really huge number. Let's see if we can add a big number. How about six hundred and fifty-two plus forty-three? Can we do this? Yeah, we can do this. So let's add them together. What's two plus three? Five. Great. And what's five plus four? Nine. Super. And six plus zero? Six. So we can see here, 652 plus 43 equals how much? 695. That's a, we're doing real big numbers here. I'm feeling good. I must be getting lots of sleep. We must be eating lots of healthy food, drinking lots of water, because our brains are on it. We're doing great. All right, let's stand up and sing a song together, and then we're going to say hello to a wonderful friend we haven't seen in a little while, okay? Do you remember our Doctors in the Clinic song? I do too. I promise. Are you ready? Okay. The doctor's in the clinic. The doctor's in the clinic. Hi ho the dairy yo. The doctor's in the clinic. The doctor takes the nurse. The doctor takes the nurse. Hi ho the dairy yo. The doctor takes the nurse. The nurse takes the patient. The nurse takes the patient. Hi ho the dairy yo. The nurse takes the patient. The patient gets help. The patient gets help. Hi ho the dairy yo. The patient gets help. The patient feels better. The patient feels better. Hi ho the dairy yo. The patient feels better. Oh, wonderful. Thanks for singing with me. Let's say hello to our wonderful friend, Miss Kelly. She's back. Hi, Miss Kelly. Hi, Miss Kendra. It's wonderful Everyone. to see you. Good to see you too. So Miss Kelly knows a lot, a lot, a lot about our brains and our nervous system and everywhere on our body. Let's talk about our brains. Can you tell us about our brains? Yeah, so I know you guys have this worksheet. Looks a little bit like this. So we're gonna go over this really quickly. If you wanna put this in front of you, I'm gonna show you on your brain where this is, okay? So the first part is the frontal lobe. So this is right under our forehead, right in the front of our head. You touch that? Yeah. Your frontal lobe. Yes, this helps us with decision making. And then behind that, kind of on the top of our head, we call this the parietal lobe. So this is how we feel everything and how we move. So sensation, like touch, and movement. And then underneath that, along the sides of our head, we have the temporal lobes. So this is what allows us to talk and to understand language and learn language and to hear. So behind that, in the back of our head, we have the occipital lobe. This is where our eyes send our information and allows us to see and understand what we're seeing. Cool. Yeah. What's underneath that? Underneath that, we have something called the cerebellum. Oh. That's at the very bottom of our skull, right above our neck. It's also protected by our skull. Cerebellum. Yeah, so that helps us coordinate our movement and have balance, like standing on one leg. This is something that we have to Can work on. Can you do on. that? <laughs> that's the cerebellum. Take some job. practice. Yeah. Cool. So that's our brain. We know all the different parts of our brain. Mm -hmm. And it's connected to our nervous system. Can yes. you tell us about that? Yeah. So our brain is held, protected by our skull. And then through our spine, it sends messages down 
all throughout our body and it uses something called the spinal cord so if you see a little yellow in between the spine there that's the spinal cord all the way down the spine and then you see little strings coming out the side these are your nerves so this is the spinal cord sending messages out to your legs your arms your organs and it also gets messages back from them so you can tell where your arms are you can pick things up right so we know that there's nerves where are there nerves in your body huh everybody where's your nerves in your body in one place no they are everywhere right yes. miss kelly they're everywhere yes they go absolutely to our ends of our fingertips to our tippy toes everywhere all the way back up to our brain so i can see on this spine and i know the spinal cord is going through the spine and i see all the nerves coming out can the nerves up here work for my legs and these nerves down here work for my arms no that's not how it works so it kind of goes to wherever is closest. So up at the top here, at the bottom of your neck, your nerves for your arms, for your hands, for your fingers, that all comes out of here. And then for your legs, we, go, we can look at all the way at the bottom here. This is our backbone, right? And the sacrum at the very bottom, this is where our nerves for our legs come out. That allows us to move our legs and to feel our legs. Wow, okay, so if the nerves up top come out for our arms up here and these come out for our legs, what do you guys think, where are these nerves going? Where are they going? Right, the bottom ones are for our legs, the top ones are for our arms. Can you feel your stomach? Can you feel that if you poke it? Miss Kelly, do these nerves go close to our stomach? Yes, absolutely. Like I said, staying kind of close to where they are, if this is near your stomach, you're gonna feel your stomach. It also will get messages back from your stomach to your brain to let you know your organs, like if you're full hmm. or if you're hungry. All of our feelings. So if we're feeling touch or if you're feeling hungry or yeah. thirsty, that our nerves will send the message to our brain and then they can maybe they can send a message to our arm to go pick up some food. Exactly. That's really cool. Yeah. Thanks for sharing that with me. For sure. Now everybody, we're going to take a look at our brain worksheet. Okay? Let's take a look and Miss Kelly just told us where those parts are. Let's see if we can remember. We touched them a little bit right <laughs> and let's put our name up top I am Miss Kendra still every day I am Miss Kendra who are you every day that's good news okay so we remember there's lots of parts of our brain and you have this paper if you need it we can use it if you don't need it that means we've been practicing a lot okay so up here in the front what was that lobe called front frontal lobe who said that very good frontal lobe okay and what was behind the frontal lobe this lobe helps us with moving and sensation, our feeling. Parietal lobe, that's right. So let's write that on the line. If you need help spelling, we can ask for help or we can get ready for this worksheet and we could take all these names and write them in a word bank here. Okay, and then we could use those words and put them where we remember, all the way in the back, same as our skull bones, was the occipital lobe. And that is for what? That's gonna help us to see. 
occipital lobe. And what was next to our ears? We remember we have the temporal bone, temporal lobe. Okay, and what sits right underneath our brain there? Very important for our balance. Cerebellum. Cerebellum. And then connecting our brain to our spinal cord is our brain stem. Brain stem, and that's really important. That's in charge of our breathing and things like that. Okay, and here we see, what is the sentence? Can you read this for me? Bra this is my brain. This is my brain. Let's practice writing that. This is my brain. Great. Okay, my friends, that's really awesome. I have one more thing to show you here today. This is something just really cool, just to, that we can see. Miss Kelly also shared with me that eating really good, healthy fats like avocado and fish are really great for our nervous system, right? We remember that drinking lots of water, eating lots of healthy food, getting exercise, and sleeping is really good for our nervous system and brain. But when we're eating those healthy foods, we also need to eat some fats, right? But when I say fats, I'm not talking about junk food and candy and chips. I'm talking about healthy fats like olive oil, and avocado, and fish. And we need those healthy fats because they are a big part of our nervous system, right? And we remember talking about our nerve cells, right? These are two pictures of a nerve cell. They're called a neuron, right? And they have, at one side, a big body. This is the cell body, right? And you see this is called an axon. It's a little pathway on the neuron. And it shows here, it's covered with little pieces of myelin sheath. That's fat. We need healthy fat to cover our nerve axon. This is a happy nerve, right? And at the end of it, we have the terminal button. This is where it sends the message, right? So here we receive the message on our dendrites. Message comes in. Let's see if we can do this. Miss Kendra is going to cut the paper. Okay, so if this cell wants to talk to this cell, it will take its information it's electricity, shoot it down the axon, out the terminal button, and this terminal button touching this one will take in the information. And it can pass it to the next one, and to the next one, and the next one, and the next one, and the next one, and the next one, until it gets all the way down to my finger and says, hello. <laughs> All right, so that's our nerve cell. That's just some fun information for us. It was a really great week. I'm so happy it's Friday and it's beautiful weather outside. We can do a lot of exercise and get a lot of fresh air this weekend. Yeah? Okay, so let's do that and we'll be ready for next week. You guys have a wonderful day. I'll see you later and have a great weekend.